Well, good afternoon, everyone. I am absolutely delighted to welcome you to Montgomery College at our Tacoma Park Silver Spring campus. And we're grateful today to have so many of our state's leading policymakers here uh, touring our facility. First, Maryland's own Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown is here today, a leader of Maryland Healthcare Reform Coordinating Council. I'd also like to give a warm welcome to Labor Secretary Alexander Sanchez and Dr. Joshua Sharfstein, Secretary of the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. Very good, all right. The chair of the Governor's Workforce Investment Board and CEO of Adventist Hospital, wonderful partner of Montgomery College, Bill Robertson is here. They played a leading role in the new workforce goals and is here today to help talk about that. We welcome all of the members of the Workforce Investment Board and the state's Health Care Reform Council who are able to join us this afternoon. It is truly a pleasure to host this event at Montgomery College at Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus, home of our Health Sciences program. We just completed a tour of our wonderful Health Sciences building, opened nearly eight years ago. And I happen to say if you walk around this facility, you would think that it just opened eight months ago. So thank you for the wonderful work you do here. This building came about because the state and the county understood the importance of investing in a crucial workforce-related facility. The old adage, build it and they will come, certainly rings true here at Montgomery College. Since this building's opening, the number of nursing graduates has increased by 50%, and the number of graduates in our diagnostic medical sonography program has grown by over 33% in that same period. So we're living proof here at Montgomery College. It is possible to grow the state's healthcare workforce by 25% given the right facilities, faculty support, and student interests. We are proud today that our guests here recognize that community colleges are essential in building the healthcare workforce of the future. So let me offer this in conclusion. In FY11, 2,260 future nurses passed the state's nursing exam. 64% of them held associate degrees in nursing, and they passed the same licensure exam as those of bachelor's degree nurses. In addition to nursing, we offer a wide array of credit and non-credit health programs, including nursing assistants, polysonographers, and surgical technicians. We stand ready and are willing partner with our state to produce the next workforce that is needed to for our health programs. That being said, I'm very delighted to welcome to the Pony our Lieutenant Governor. Thank you very much. You're thank you, Dr. Pollard. I want to thank you and your colleagues uh, for a number of things. One, for hosting us here uh, today as we uh, announce the uh, Healthcare 2020 plan for preparing uh, Maryland's healthcare workforce. But I also want to thank you for your outstanding educational uh, leadership here at Montgomery College. We look to uh, Montgomery College and all of our uh, two year uh, colleges our community colleges, um, as the primary workforce developers. And the governor and I are very much interested in, whether it's with the governor's uh, workforce investment board or, or DLLR, with the private sector, but partnering with you to make sure that you are positioned to really meet the needs of this evolving workforce uh, in the years to come. So I thank you very much for your leadership and the outstanding work that you're doing, and I congratulate you for a 4% increase in your enrollment. Uh, so that's wonderful. I want to thank uh, Alexander Sanchez for accepting the governor's office to uh, offer uh, to uh, serve the people of Maryland uh, and in these difficult times where uh, unemployment, while a little bit lower in Maryland than the national average, uh, but higher than any of us really um, uh, um, uh, expect and, 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 and want to see, uh, your work is very critical in uh, shaping that workforce, training that workforce. And to my good friend Josh Sharfstein, as we undergo and take on the important challenges of health reform, I want to thank you for your partnership and, and your, your, your guidance and, and your uh, support to the governor's uh, agenda of expanding uh, health care and uh, access and driving down the costs. Uh, and to Bill Robertson, uh, who is uh, in his uh, volunteer work as chair of the Governor's Workforce Investment Board, we greatly appreciate what you're doing uh, on that board as well as uh, the wonderful services that you're providing, you and your leadership team and, and the entire staff uh, at Adventist uh, Healthcare. So, so thank you very much. Uh, it's really exciting to be here today to, to announce uh, this report um, and the work that the Governor's Workforce Investment Board uh, has accomplished. We do need to thank our federal partners who made this $150,000 grant possible for the report and our congressional delegation that has been uh, extremely supportive uh, of uh, this effort. Uh, the governor and I are committed, as each and every one of you, to reducing the costs of uh, delivering care 
uh, while expanding the access uh, that Marylanders have uh, to health services, health care, uh, while at the same time improving uh, the quality of, of health. And these are uh, tall tasks. We believe that um, federal health reform uh, provides the tools to accomplish all three of those uh, simultaneously. In fact, they all work together. Uh, and we're proud that in Maryland we have developed what we believe is a national model for implementing uh, federal uh, health reform. And, and why are we so excited about it? Because we believe, we estimate conservatively, uh, that over the course of the next uh, 10 years, um, that uh, by implementing health reform, we're going to save Maryland taxpayers about $850 million, while at the same time cutting in half the number of Marylanders without in health insurance. Uh, and uh, those uh, figures are conservatively estimated by um, an independent think tank out of the University of Maryland, Baltimore uh, County. So we see it uh, as a real benefit uh, to Maryland. However, what that means, uh, and uh, you carry some of the burden, uh, doctor, uh, all of us share in the burden, is to make sure that we have uh, the qualified workforce uh, to deliver uh, more care uh, to more Marylanders as we bring them uh, into uh, the health system and into coverage. Uh, we know that the healthcare fields are the second fastest growing uh, fields or sectors uh, in Maryland. And I asked recently, well, what's the first? The first is information technology, but when you think that a high percentage of that information technology is in healthcare, um, perhaps healthcare is the fastest growing sector uh, in the state of Maryland. And uh, because of this enormous growth and our commitment to high quality health care uh, under uh, the Health Care Reform Coordinating Council, which Dr. Sharfstein and I uh, co-chair uh, together, we've made training and expanding the workforce uh, a top priority. Um, and uh, we are all committed to ensuring that our state has a high quality workforce and that our workforce is, to, is prepared uh, to meet the expanding health care needs of our state. Uh, and the governor and I share the stated vision in the report that is being announced today um, that we're highlighting today. And that vision is that the state of Maryland has a primary care workforce that meets the needs of all Maryland residents. We share that vision uh, and uh, we're here today uh, to roll out a report uh, that lays out some specific actions to implement that uh, vision. Uh, the Governor's Workforce Investment Board, in partnership with uh, labor, uh, with the business sector, the healthcare community, um, educational committee, higher education, has developed a roadmap uh, and has established a goal that will grow Maryland's workforce, healthcare workforce, uh, by 10 to 25 percent um, over the next 10 years. And not only do we need a larger healthcare workforce, but we also need a highly skilled one. And today's report contains concrete recommendations to achieve both of these goals. The plan accomplishes, or at least sets out, lays out specific action items to accomplish four uh, important objectives. Uh, it calls for a comprehensive workforce uh, planning and analysis. Uh, it looks closely at how we can use non-traditional paths uh, to strengthen our primary care workforce. Uh, it addresses primary care workforce distribution throughout the state in our uh, shortage areas, and it develops a plan to improve primary care compensation and reimbursement. Uh, job creation, of course, is another benefit of our ambitious plans for health care expansion. Uh, in the last two years in Maryland, we've added nearly 12,000 health care jobs uh, in hospitals, in nursing homes, and residential care and ambulatory care uh, facilities. Uh, the more high quality jobs that we can create in Maryland, the more growth that we will see in the middle class, and the more we will be able to strengthen our communities. We'll build strong communities in which health care will be available to more of our neighbors uh, than ever before. And Governor Malley and I, again, are very proud of the vision that's stated in this report uh, and look forward to partnering with each and every one of you as we look to implement the action items uh, that are laid out in the report. Uh, so it's my pleasure uh, to turn the podium over to Bill Robertson, the chair of GWIB, who will be able to tell us a little bit more about what's exactly in that report. Thank you. Thanks, I feel. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Robertson, and it is my privilege to serve as the chair of the Governor's Workforce Investment Board. I also was privileged to, to serve as the chair of the Healthcare Workforce Planning Grant Steering Committee, which is the group that has worked uh, across the state for the last year on this uh, strategic plan. And in my day job, I am the president and CEO of Adventist Healthcare, the <laughs> largest employer in Montgomery County. 
Uh, in October of 2010, the Governor's Warfare Investment Board was awarded a $150,000 grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It's a HRSA grant that was focused on preparing for reform, health care 2020. And the charge was to develop a strategic plan that over the next 10 years would uh, create increased capacity in terms of primary care providers of 10 to 25 percent within the state of Maryland. The original uh, uh, grant asked that we look just at the physician component of primary care, but we asked that we be allowed to expand our purview to both nurse practitioners and physician's assistants because as we have looked at the challenge that we are faced with, that uh, there is not a sufficient opportunity to grow the physician community mm -hmm. over the next 10 years to take care of the primary care needs of this state. And they will be large. They're already large. Uh, healthcare reform will create about 400,000 people with insurance that do not have it today. And those mm -hmm. people currently receive their care if they receive it in emergency departments uh, and the like. And they will need primary care services. So the challenge for us is to create a roadmap that allows us to have the right number of primary care providers. And you notice I didn't say physicians, because it will be providers. It will be expanding the physician capacity in our state in terms of number of physicians who are dedicated to primary care, primary care being pediatrics, internal medicine, family practice, general medicine, and the like. And we believe that supplementing that will be nurse practitioners who bring great skills to the primary care uh, community and physician's assistants, but they bring different skills than physicians. In concert together, they will be able, we believe, to address the primary care needs for the, for the state of Maryland. But it's not an easy challenge. There's economics involved, there's licensure challenges, there's education system challenges, and the roadmap that we have laid out seeks to address each one of these challenges in a proactive way that will change how Maryland is able to meet the primary care needs of the communities that are within our uh, great state. Uh, this has been a collaborative activity. Healthcare providers, uh, consultants, educational organizations, the Governor's Workforce Investment Board, many people have been involved in this strategic plan, and we are very pleased that uh, it is being presented today, but we have to remember the work has just begun. This is just a plan, and it becomes reality through the collaborative, ongoing work of the people who are involved in the plan and many others over time. Uh, one of the uh, uh, people who will be very significantly involved is the Secretary uh, Sharfstein, as in his role, and of course, Department of Labor Licensing and Regulation, Secretary Sanchez. And so as we go forward, the Governor's Workforce Investment Board is committed to being actively a part of this, to being uh, instrumental in making sure we stay on track and to collaborating with the amazing resources that are in this great state of Maryland. And now it's my privilege to introduce Secretary Sanchez. Thanks much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for leading the effort to, uh, to put this together. I want to recognize uh, your partner in this effort, Lynn Reed, the director of the Governor's Workforce Investment Board. You two have been an absolutely dynamic couple uh, in getting to the point where we're ready to release this today. <laughs> Appreciate it very much. And all the folks up here and the, for the work that they've done, Lieutenant Governor Brown, uh, you know, you travel outside of the state and the first thing people talk about is, hey, that's a, a health care community that you have there and the work that you're doing. It's what we're known for. Um, and that's in large part continued because of the work that Lieutenant Governor Brown has done and his focused leadership for the Maryland Health Quality and Cost Control and especially the Maryland Health Care Reform Coordinating Council. Uh, I'm thrilled to play a part in this announcement today. You know, and as I talk more and more with employers and job seekers, I'm reminded of the famous or infamous words of our current vice president who said absolutely correctly, this is a big deal. <laughs> I mean, sure, the final bill that President Obama signed last year has some critics and even some of the supporters aren't happy with it, but that's the way progress is made. And for most states, for some states, like Maryland, that embrace the president's effort, uh, states that take the responsibility to implement reform, it will make government more efficient and it will change lives for the better. As Lieutenant Governor already mentioned, federal health care reform is going to save $850 million over the next 10 years. It will cut the number of uninsured Marylanders by half and will create jobs for our family, our friends, and our neighbors. And we must make sure that the workforce is prepared for that higher demand. We need to support programs like this one here in Montgomery College, initiatives like our Welcome Home Initiative, which helps new Americans with a medical background transition into Maryland uh, and join the healthcare workforce to the highest and best of their ability. 
Healthcare, as I've said, is a huge part of our economy and one of the fastest growing industries in Maryland. In fact, 20,000 jobs were created in Maryland since January. 6,500 of those were in healthcare. Now, those don't include the 6,700 jobs in the profession uh, of scientific and technical services, jobs that include research positions at NIH and MedImmune and Johns Hopkins and University of Maryland. Um, Lieutenant Governor Brown and the HCRCC have told us that we need to grow the healthcare workforce. We need to increase the number of primary care workers by as much as 25% by 2020. So yes, we're creating healthcare jobs, but truth be told, we're not creating them fast enough. And to be fair, we need to accelerate job growth across all of the sectors, not just in healthcare. So please get out there and contact your congressman about supporting Obama's jobs bill. Mm -hmm. But the Healthcare 2020 plan is our roadmap to a larger, more dynamic, and better skilled healthcare workforce. An important part of Lieutenant Governor Brown's work is to prepare Maryland for the, head, the federal health care reform, and it'll go a long way to move us forward toward our shared goal, goal to expand coverage, lower costs, and improve the quality of health care for all Marylanders. With that, I can't tell you how much I am pleased to be a part of this partnership and happy to call up to the microphone a colleague from the Maryland Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, a co-chair of the Maryland Health uh, Care Reform Coordinating Council, Secretary and Dr. Joshua Sharfstein. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Thank you, uh, Dr. Pollard, for the leadership at Montgomery College. Thank you, Dean Pickwick, for your work. I think I was here when I actually recertified in basic life support at some point on the campus. I think there was a class. I think it's been too long since I've seen patients, and I say that because I'm still worried about the mannequin back there with low <laughs> blood pressure. And I know we gave atropine and we're starting to pace, but I don't know that the blood pressure came back up. So I'm going to go check on that in a minute. <laughs> um, I want to really thank uh, Secretary Sanchez and the team at GWIB, uh, Bill Robertson, Mary O'Connor, Lynn Reed, for the amazing work that is done. It is so great to have, you know, such an important issue taken on so readily by another agency and move forward with a great spirit of collaboration. So I want to really thank you all. And I also want to give just a special thanks to Lieutenant Governor. Um, you know, he, he is uh, the point person for the administration on health care, and what that means for me is that there, there are a number of tough issues that come up with health care, and when we need help to figure out how to move forward, he is really the captain of the team. He's the one who sits down and rolls up his sleeves and asks the question, what's the right thing to do and how can we get there? And it re really means a tremendous uh, amount on a lot of different issues for us. And it's the reason um, that uh, Maryland really is uh, doing some great things with, with health care reform. I'm not, I'm not going to say too much other than that um, this ultimately, it's, it's about those big numbers, it's about the report, but at the end of the day, it's about a patient and the care that he or she needs in order to stay well. That's what primary care is about. People with chronic illness to avoid that complication, to stay out of the emergency department, to not have that hospitalization. And if if all you have is the emergency room to go to, then people, you know, just wait and wait and then they get sick. And the insurance card, while it's great we're gonna get more people insurance cards, it doesn't mean much if you cannot get to help. And um, you are training the future leaders who are going to be the help that many Marylanders need. It is going to not only help them stay healthy, it's going to help reduce costs, and it's going to create jobs in Maryland. There are, as you alluded to, some people who are very negative on health care reform out there in the United States, and they are passing up a tremendous opportunity to improve the health of their citizens, to uh, address costs by growing the primary care base and getting people care when they need it and for, for job growth. So I'm, I'm just so proud of Maryland to do this and I'm really thankful to be here with all of you. And, and I will say that uh, in the spirit of, of pitching in, I just got uh, ethics committee approval to go back and see patients at one of our institutions in Maryland. So I may hopefully in the next few months be uh, taking, sneaking away in the middle of our meetings and uh, trying to see some patients. I'm a pediatrician. and. If that happens, I will probably be back here to refresh my training <laughs> on, so, on some of the things, but I'm really looking forward to, to being a part of the solution in, in more ways than one. Thank you. Thank you. Great. I think that wraps it up. Good. Well, that wraps it up. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Yes, indeed. Thank you. <laughs>